One of the curious things that you, you, you soon have to come to terms with when you look at the life of Bach is that he never wrote an opera. Um, and that's a big conundrum. Why didn't he write an opera? Opera was the passport to success. It was the means of earning a good living. It was the, it was the really favored uh, genre of the day to, to make your, your name in the world. And yet he, he went away from it. I mean, was it because he never really heard any opera? That can't be the case. There were several opportunities in his life when he could have heard opera, starting from the time when he was a, an adolescent living in Lüneburg, not so very far south of Hamburg, uh, where there was a flourishing opera house and Handel and Mattheson all performed there and Telemann later but was very much involved in it. Was it because he had an allergy towards opera because he thought it was somehow uh, uninteresting as a genre. I mean, he talks sometimes disparagingly about those little ditties that they go on uh, performed at the Dresden Opera when he, he says, shall we go and hear them to his eldest son? I don't think it's anything to do with that. I think it's to do with something much more profound, which is that um, opera by then, I'm talking about the early 1720s, 1730s, had already if you like, taken a, a wrong turning. When you think of how fantastically um, innovative opera was at its inception back in the 1600s with people like Monteverdi, above all, where it was a type of through composed utterance in musical terms, natural speech rhythms and also closed form dance and, and the, the, the basics of what later became an aria. By the time you get to 1700, a, 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 just a, a century later, it's already started to fall into two different categories. You have all the action packed into restative, restative being <clears throat> very fast paced patter rhythms that tell you the story, the narrative, and then moments of reflection and uh, emotional response to the action in the form of arias usually da capo arias in the sense that you start with an A section, it goes on to a B section, and you go back to the A section. I'm feeling sad, but my heart is grieving. I feel still sadder, and so on. I think that Bach, although he took quite a lot of uh, those conventions and turned them on their head, felt that there was something much more profound to be expressed uh, it, through a different form, which we might call mutant opera. Uh, it's as though opera has jumped tracks, as it were, uh, and it becomes a kind of music drama that doesn't require the stage, it doesn't require makeup, it doesn't require uh, wigs, it doesn't require uh, spears and costumes and swords. Um, it re simply requires the musicians to deliver in a very, very dramatic, but not theatrical way. And there's something of the fear that was really inculcated, I think, in the clergy of, of uh, Bach's day, uh, in that they said they didn't want him to compose music that was in any way operatic or theatrical. And that was the first thing that he, the first rule that he broke, because his passions and his cantatas are full of drama. Drama in the sense of dialectic, of conversations going on between characters, between two, two voices, between several voices, between an instrument or several instruments and a voice, almost as though uh, the aria sung by an individual is being echoed or anticipated or, or contradicted even by with, whether it's a violin or an oboe or, or a flute. So that there's this element of dialogue uh, constantly, uh, a constant thread all the way through uh, Bach's writing, and which I think we find uh, is the entry point for a composer like Mozart later on, who, who picked up a lot of this dramatic mutant operatic thread that, that uh, Bach so beautifully uh, expressed. Mm -hmm.